City of Willis, big trouble. Right on down the line. You can come right on down the line as well as the one that goes through. We need to have some water. We need to have water breathing down. And there's solutions to do it. There's a way to do it. We need to be aggressive in doing it. I have seen this department help create, get that for the water district back up and get it running with the other water districts throughout the whole town and the rest. We need to move forward. We do not have the water. We are not aggressive in pursuing it as fast as we should. And we need to we have to lose those water rights. And I see that throughout the county, I mean, throughout the state. And I can tell you other things that are going out throughout the state. That's the reason why I run. I work with other government agencies on a regular basis, work with politicians. We come up with solutions, and we resolve problems. We're on a regular basis. I don't advertise for it. They come to me because I used to be in the Office of Emergency Services, and they track me down. They follow me across the way. So in closing, I want to tell you that I thank you very much, and I'm sorry to get the closing break. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. It's always uh, a challenge to follow Supervisor Mayfield. <laughs> but uh, I, I grew up in, uh, in this area, and except for going away to college, I've lived here all my life. I can't imagine living anywhere else. I care very much about our community and the future of our community. And although I will be representing the, the second district, I will have a countywide perspective. All too often, it seems like the current board is bogged down in their petty concerns as it relates to their district rather than having a broader perspective. I believe it's the responsibility of the Board of Supervisors to work together to make decisions that are in the public interest. That doesn't mean they're always going to agree. It should mean that they're willing to honestly and open-mindedly listen to their colleagues and work together to find the open ground to make those decisions that are broad-based and are in the public interest. They need to treat each other with respect, staff, and the public. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. I think we are faced with many serious issues. I'm not kidding when I quote Will Rogers and say it's not enough to be on the right track. If you just sit there, you're going to get run over. We're about to get run over. There are major challenges facing this valley related to growth and development. Unless the city and county are able to cooperate on a tax sharing agreement, move forward with regional planning, and be able to implement those plans in a collaborative fashion, our patterns for growth and development will be dictated to us by others. We will not be making the choice. And so it's imperative that we work together. I think there's uh, many other issues. The budget is going to be extremely challenging. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be the least desirable part of the job, setting the priorities and, unfortunately, in some cases, having to make cuts. As a four-year member of the Ukiah City Council, or about three and a half, it will be four years by the time I take office if I'm elected. And with eight years' experience on the City and County Planning Commissions, so I believe I am well qualified to make the planning decisions that are facing this county. The Ukiah Valley Area Plan has been going on forever, and it's uh, coming to a point, but it won't mean anything because the City and County are not in agreement, so it's never going to be effectively implemented. We need to change that. We need to have a unified water policy instead of every little agency charting its own course and not cooperating with the others to move forward in one direction. Sonoma County is effective because they speak with one voice. We need to do that also. I also, uh, as we, thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Mulder. I'd like to talk about the downtown for a minute. Um, I attended the United Art Center's new grand opening a few Friday nights ago. And there was about 2,500 people there in two hours. And I thought it was a great response to our local artists. Um, one of the comments I heard from our local artists is, they can't get as much for their art here as you can, say, in Vallal or Mendocino on the coast, because the perception is that if you come inland, it's not quite as good. I think we have a perfect opportunity now to create a critical mass around downtown to support and enhance our artists' value uh, to support the boutiques and restaurants in the downtown, make a nice little walking community there. And I think the way we're going to do that is by attracting people into this valley. Uh, my supporters want a Costco, they want a Target, 
Nobody can agree on, I want an old Navy, or I want an olive garden, or I want this or that. They all want something. They want to be able to stay here in this valley and quit sending $200 million a year to Sonoma County and giving them our money. Just the trip alone that people take once a month and they load up their ice chest and their SUVs and their pickup trucks, just what they would save in gas a year is about $700. Times however many thousands of people do it, that's a lot of money that could get spread around this community. I've got some demographics here. I'd love, I'm not going to read them. I'd love to share it with you after um, this. But it, we've got what's going on for what I call the gentrification of Ukiah, folks. If you look around, there's not a whole bunch of spring chickens in the audience. Ukiah is getting older. I've been knocking on a lot of doors, and there's a lot of 80 and 90 year old folks out there. They're not in the workforce. Where's the workforce? You see in the headlines of the paper, teachers protesting layoff notices. Folks, we've got a declining school enrollment because people of childbearing years and people that have kids can't afford to live here, and they're moving where they can afford to live, and they're moving where there's jobs. And I keep hearing we need to bring in some nice, high-paying, clean industry. Where are they going to live? Our house is here. An Empire Gardens fixer-upper costs more than a brand new energy-efficient house in Santa Rosa now. It used to be you could come here and buy a house for about $100,000 less than Santa Rosa, but not anymore. The no growth people have had a stranglehold on this valley for about 25 or 30 years, and we're suffering the ill effects of it. It's kind of what you would just consider the unintended consequences of no growth. So we have a choice. You can either start developing and create some housing where people with young kids can live here in the valley, and you can have the continuation of life so we can have a full circle of life here, where there'll be people to take care of the older people in their uh, declining years. Thank you. Thank you. So, <coughs> well, I wanted to start, uh, I'll keep it brief. I wanted to start and thank everyone for coming this evening, as well as the sponsors for putting this on, and all of the members here, all the other supervisors, uh, that some I'm meeting for the first time, most I've met several times before. Um, and a special thanks to Kendall for doing a pretty good job, actually, for the position that I like. Um, <laughs> it's not that she's done something that I don't agree with so much in that I would have a different view on how I would come about getting certain things done. Uh, I think that we need to encourage more community participation in this, and so far, kudos to the current board for getting some meetings on the coast. Um, we need to encourage the people that have typical nine to five jobs, their students, maybe they don't have transportation, <clears throat> unless they take and make a, a large dent in their day, they don't get to participate as fully in this as they should. Um, I'd like to encourage town hall meetings uh, in the 4th District, <coughs> from Piercy, Leggett, Casper, Fort Bragg, <coughs> all those areas. Um, I think that as a county land use planner that I'm working at right now, I have a unique position here to be able to see both sides of the projects, not just from the developer side, but also from the regulatory agency side. We definitely need to encourage a balance between smart growth and the environmental concerns. I promise I keep this short. Um, what we need is not just five people running the county, but five people listening to their constituents and bringing their concerns back to these meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Smith. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here tonight and for our three uh, partners that uh, coordinated this effort. I think it's been um, uh, very successful. I was a little um, concerned with the format to begin with in terms of there wasn't a lot of uh, substance and there wasn't time to really develop concepts, but I think we all decided to, to just go forth and, and I think it's worked very well. Um, a lot of the discussion tonight is focused on the Ukiah Valley. Here we are and, and, and I spent quite a bit of time